Praise the Lord, everybody. And I am so excited that you all took time out of your busy schedules to join me on tonight. I want to jump right in and get started with what the Lord is going to say to us on tonight. I want to open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this divine opportunity. We thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you're going to do. Dear God, we thank you right now for taking control over the airways. We thank you for taking control over the atmosphere in our homes. We thank you for all that you're going to speak to us on tonight, dear God. In your word, you said, he that is thirsty, let him come. He that is hungry, let him come. So we are sitting right here at your feet, dear God, waiting on you to feed us with that manna from heaven once again. Dear God, we thank you now for how you're going to bless us on tonight. We thank you for how your anointing is going to go in through each and every home, dear God. We thank you for how you're going to bless us because we took out time out of our schedule to sit at your feet on tonight, dear God. We thank you for everything you're going to speak to us. We thank you for enlightening us on tonight, dear God. I thank you, dear God, for every listener, for every click, for every tag, for every share, for every seed that would be sown, dear God. We give you glory in advance. We thank you for the good ground that you have given unto us. So God, now take over on tonight, dear God, and have your way with us, in us, and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I am so excited that you all took time out to join me tonight. I am super excited for those of you that joined me at Worship and Warfare. Did the Lord not meet us there? Listen, I it, it took me about a week to just come down from, from everything that God did on that Friday night. If you were not there, I hope you got a chance to view it. The, the viewing of it does, does it no justice. Let me just say, say that. Um, God met us there. He blessed signs, wonders, and miracles um, took place. I am still praying over the seeds that were sown because God has not released me from praying over those. So those people that sowed seeds, I know some viewed online and they sowed, some were in the house, they sowed. God has not released me yet from praying over those seeds. Listen, I already have the testimonies of what God has done. I will share that uh, um, later. Listen, God performed miracles. That's all I can say. If you were not there, you just have to look at the re. You have to look at the replay of it, and you can kind of get the gist of what God did. Um, uh, uh, my, they are commenting now. God bless you all. My highlight was, and I think I shared it, was right at the end of worship and warfare. I was done, and I was standing at standing up front with the prayer shawl on, and I was just looking looking towards heaven because God was telling me. I had already did the altar call. Actually, I did about three altar calls, but I had did the altar call. And actually, when my daughters, um, when my daughters um, showed, looked at some of the replay of worship and warfare, I didn't realize that I labored in prayer for over an hour. That's why I, I was like, oh, well, that's why I'm so tired the next day. But my highlight was at the end of um, the altar calls and I was about to dismiss and then the Lord kept saying, there is one more. So I kept looking at the people. And then my aunt, Pastor Saxton, she was looking at me like, what is it? And I was looking at her like, there's somebody else. And in the midst of me saying, God, there is somebody else. A Caucasian man walked in. He walked in with his son. And I looked up and when our eyes locked, I said, you're coming for me. And he just basically fell in my arms weeping. That was the highlight for me. Um, out of all the things that happened, because many of you know, that is one of the purposes in me not having it in a church. I want to have it in a setting where it can meet people no matter where they are. So they don't have to feel like, oh, it's in a church. So I got to come a certain way. I want those people to walk in that we don't expect. I want those people to walk, to walk in that, that need a miracle. Um, and, and that was the icing on the cake. Could I smell the alcohol? Yes, I could. could. Could I see that he was a little tipsy? Yes, I could. But listen, that is who I'm called to. And that for me, that was the icing on the cake. So when you all see the little flyer that I'm putting up that I'm be doing services every second Sunday, beginning in October, and actually that date, the date is 10 10. I ain't gonna mess y'all up with that. But my first opening service is on 10 10, and it's simply me coming off of here and going live once a month. But that was, that solidified 
believe what God had told me because I'm gonna share a little bit and I'm gonna get into what we're gonna talk about on tonight. But but that but that solidified to me what, what God was calling me to because I had been having these dreams. Listen, I had been dreaming for about yeah, Donald, don't do that. Don't do that, Donna. Don't do that. <laughs> you putting the date up there, don't do it. I had been having these dreams, listen, about the rapture. You know, I, I post off and on, but these dreams have been going for almost a year. So um the last dream I had, because I I knew what I, you know how you in ministry, you know what you're supposed to do, but you kind of sort of teeter totting around, you're doing everything but the exact thing. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. But I was doing everything but the exact thing. And so um, I have been having these dreams about the rapture, the rapture, the rapture. But in every dream, I'm getting people ready. I'm getting people ready. So I had one who was on a bus that went over a cliff. One we had, we, it, a, a, a tsunami was coming. One we I had, we were, we was in a plane. And God kept sending me back to get these people to get them ready. Right? So the last dream I had, my dad and my grandmother came. And they were telling me all about heaven. And this is not the first, my, my first when my first granny died, the one that raised me, I had the exact dream about her. She was describing heaven, how it looked. And showing me how she looked and she was explaining to me she's not in pain. So this dream, my dad and my grandmother, Elizabeth, that just recently passed, they came to me and they were telling me all about heaven and how beautiful it is. And dad was saying, it, 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 it's better than what you were telling me. He said, and I want you to come. He said, but the two reasons why you can't come, he said, it's because of them girls. He said, they, you can't, you can't leave them right now. He said, but I really would love for you to see this. And he was just saying, baby girl, you wouldn't believe it. He said, you, and he was just going on and on. And my grandmother just looking at me like, I don't, my grandmother looked at me like, I don't even have words for what this place is like. Then my dad looked at me and he said, but you got to get the people ready. And when I woke up, tears were just coming. I was like, okay, God, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So that is what the services is about. It's all about me getting God's people ready. It's not about me starting a church. It's not about me starting a movement. I just have, I have a voice. I know there's certain people that's called to me. I understand that. It is, it, it is that, that I have to give them this thing and, and I'm, I'm doing it here, but I'm not doing it the way I, I can't get like I want to get. I just put it that way. And it's not going to be worship and warfare. So don't think you come to you about to get the violin and the dances. You're not getting all that. You getting the, the unadulterated word of God and deliverance. Those are two things I want to accomplish. Um, and, and, and so that is what those services are about. But I want to get into what we are talking about tonight. I got to go back. I'm trying to look at, look at some things. I want to go back into uh, what we're going to talk about tonight because it's talking about God's glory. Listen, the topic for tonight, because this is episode 48 of Soul Now. Now we've been on here more than that. But this is episode 48. You get the victory. Listen to this. God began to tell me, he said, tell them they're going to get the victory, but the glory belongs to me. Listen, listen, you got, you got to understand this because we are all in a season and God has already told me that the seed soars. Yes, he's going to bless them. He said, yes, I'm going to do all these wonderful things for them. He said they would get the victory. Listen to this. Listen, this is going to bless you. He says, tell my sons, tell my daughters, they are going to get the victory over that thing. Listen, some of you should have lost it right there. He says, whatever you're going through, you're going to get the victory in it. That ain't up for question. He said, that is not up for question. He said, yes, you're going to get the victory. You're going to get the victory in my time. He said, you're going to see the victory before you leave the earth. Everything you pray for, you shall see it before you leave the earth. Listen, he said, but, but, clause, pause right there. He said, but the glory. He says, you're going to get the victory, but the glory is going to belong to me. He said, now you better tell them. He said, when they get the victory, the glory belongs to me. What is God saying? When you triumph over whatever you're in, when you come through whatever you're in, he has to get the glory. You can't say, I did it. I made it. I made it happen. I did this. I, uh -uh. He gets the glory. Understand it, because that, that's very important. You will get the victory. The victory belongs to you. And you're only going to get the victory because God is allowed. Oh, my God. You're only going to get the victory, number one, because God is allowing it. He said, and then when you get the victory, he said, you're only getting the victory because I'm helping you. He said, and then when you get the victory, listen, he said, and then when you get the victory, you have to understand that I got to get the glory. He said, you can't get the victory and then say, oh, I did it. 
It, it was because of my job. It was because I worked all these hours. He said, no, no, no. The glory has to come back to me. Watch this. I'm, I'm going to show y'all something tonight. And you have read this story, I'm sure, over and over again. But y'all know me. Um, I, I'm an Old Testament head. I love the Old Testament. And, and, and my daughter say, I just love the Old Testament because God was killing folks. Because God was ruthless in the Old Testament. Jesus came. And he was a little nicer, but God was killing folks. And that may be partly why, but we're going to get into this. Listen, God says, understand that when you're praising and you're testifying, that is giving him the glory. This is why this is so important. Never, ever, when you go through something, withhold the testimony. Listen, because people say, you always telling your business. And, and see, the thing about me, the, the reason why I have to do that is because when I was called to preach in 99, I ran forever. But finally in 99, when I decided I'm going to go ahead and do this, because if, if not, I'm going to lose my mind. That's how bad it got. I literally thought I am going to lose my mind if I don't do this. So when I started preaching the gospel, the very first vision that God gave me, uh, and I shared it with my friend, uh, Pastor Carl Sterling, I was preaching, 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 preaching. And somebody was telling me in the background, just say whatever, just say whatever. And I became like a mute. Listen, I became like a mute. And when I opened my mouth, nothing would come out. And then when I opened my mouth again, blood started pouring out. And I woke up and I said, God, what does this mean? Because I couldn't understand. I'm like, what is this? And so God began to tell me, he said, every time you open your mouth, you don't speak unless I'm speaking, number one. He said, every time I bring you through a trial, you got to give the testimony of what I did. And he told me, he said, because you, he said, when you accept this call, listen, he told me, he said, when you accept this call to preach, he said, to preach my gospel, he said, your life will be an open book. So I already knew that going in, that I would be a testimony that would bring people out. I already knew I was about to go through some stuff. I didn't know it was going to be as much as I've gone through, but I knew the purpose. Let's, oh, this is about to bless y'all. I knew the purpose. Listen to the, oh, this is going to bless you. I knew the purpose and why I was going through, so it made it easier. Oh, God. So it made it easier for me to go through all the things that I went through, all the surgeries, all the things. Because see, I, I, some things I've been through, I don't even share. I've had about 10 surgeries. Listen, I, I've been through so much in my life that, that, that God has told me, your life will be an open book. You will get the, listen, you will get the victory, but the glory belongs to me. Everything I take you through, you got to tell him. He said, I don't care how ugly it is. He said, your ministry will be a transparent ministry. I remember when I was at Second Calvary Baptist Church, that's why I did my initial sermon. They asked me, what scripture would you stand off of? And I said, it has to be Paul. I have become all things to all men that I may win them. So that is why I share my testimony. So this is what you have to remember on tonight. Listen, you have to remember this on tonight. When you're going through, you have to give the testimony. That's the only way God going to get glory. So have given the testimony and have telling what God did is not going to work. Why? Because there are people that their, their, their breakthrough, their salvation is linked to your testimony. If you never tell them, Lori, this is how I came through without having a father. The, the people that are fatherless would never hear that. They would never know that there could be victory on the other side of this thing unless they hear our true testimony. Watch this. Listen, so I'm jump right into this scripture. So I want to do this first. Victory, this is what victory is, the biblical definition. Overcoming the enemy, simple. Overcoming the enemy. Achievement of mastery or success in a struggle or endeavor, which is against all odds. Woo! God, I said something right there. Victory, when you overcome the odds. Victory, when, when, when everybody else counted you out, but you still come out on top. Victory, when, when the devil said it was going to kill you, but now you got a testimony. Victory. Listen, watch this. And what is glory? Watch this. Glory is praise, honor, or distinction extended by a common consent. It is worship. It is praise. It is honor. And it is thanksgiving. And it's a glory that belongs to God. Listen, you can, if you praise anything else, listen, listen, this is important. If you say, I won this, if you say, I came out of divorce okay because I had money. 
No, you didn't. You came out because God brought you. Okay, listen. If you say I came out of the ring because my airbags, um, um, what you call it, um, burst open and saved my life. No, you didn't. God did that. See, so you have to make sure that your glory is going to God, not to your car, not to your job, not to your finances, not to your family. The glory belongs to God in every situation. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Listen to this. We're going to look at David tonight. This, this is going to bless you. So I'm going to start with First Chronicles and I'm going to go through the 13th through the 16th chapter. I'm not going to read all those chapters. Don't get nervous. I'm going to highlight stuff out of each chapter. I'm going to show you something. So um, First Chronicles 13, 1 through 14. This is our background. So I'm going to lay the foundation. Then we're going to walk through it. Watch this. David consulted with all of his leaders, the commanders of the thousands and of the hundreds. Then David addressed the entire assembly of Israel. If it seems right to you, pay attention. If it seems right to you and it is God's will, let's invite all our relatives, wherever they are throughout all of Israel, along with their relatives, including the priests and the Levites from their cities surrounding pastures to join us. And let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of our God back. The Ark of the Covenant that was out of sight, out of mind during the days of Saul. The entire assembly of Israel agreed. They agreed. Watch this. Everybody agreed that it is right. It is the right thing to do. So David gathered all of Israel together to go and get the Ark of the Covenant. They moved the Ark of the Covenant on a brand new cart. Pay attention. Brand new cart from the house of Abinadab and Uzziah and Ahio in charge. In procession with the Ark of the Covenant, David and all the Israelites, they worshiped. They had music going, bands, they had all types of instruments, everything going. When they were at the threshing floor of Kedon, the ox stumbled. Listen, the ox that was carrying the Ark of the Covenant stumbled. Uzziah grabbed the Ark of the Covenant to keep it from falling off the cart. Watch this. God erupted in anger. Uh oh. God erupted in anger against Uzziah and killed him dead on the spot for grabbing the Ark of the Covenant. Watch this. Uh, he died on the spot in the presence of God. David lost his temper. David lost it. David got upset. He got angry because God exploded against Uzziah. David was terrified of God that day. He said, how can I possibly continue this parade? With all my music and my dancers, and then we celebrate. How can we continue with the Ark of the Covenant? So David called off the parade of the Ark of the Covenant to the city of David. Instead, he started in Obed. Now, y'all know I love Obed Edom. He took the Ark of the Covenant and he stored it at Obed Edom's house. You know, bad for, bad for David, but it blessed Obed Edom and his whole house and his whole lineage. Watch this. Listen. So the three things in the Ark. There were three things in the ark. This is why the ark is so important to them. It holds the golden urn holding the manna, to, which is which reminds them uh, that God's chosen of how he sustained them in, in, in after the exodus from Egypt. It holds Aaron's staff, which has budded, which represents Jesus' eternal priestly authority. And it held the tablets um, of the covenant, which represents God as the lawgiver himself. So this was precious stuff to them. Watch this. Listen. The Ark of God had come back from the land of the Philistines. So it had been there 70 years before this. In those years, it sat at the house of Abinadad. But now David and his people wanted to put it back in its rightful place. But it did not happen because the remember the ox, they, they put the Ark of the Covenant on a cart. A brand new, beautiful cart, by the way, that they had made. They put the Ark of the Covenant on there. The ox was um, walking with the Ark of the Covenant, and it started stumbling. When the when the ox stumbled, the cart, the ark was about to fall off. Isaiah reached out his hand to grab it, and God killed him. Listen, God killed him. Watch this. The, the seven mistakes. Several mistakes was made. Mistake number one: David consulted. Remember in the beginning. They was, he said, let's get, he got all the race. I'm getting my relatives and they, re, he got everybody and the Levites and the priests together. And he said, I have a good idea. Oh my God. He said, I have a good idea. He said, why don't we take this ark back to its rightful place? Mistake number one, they took counsel. Oh God. They took counsel with each other and not with God. 
Oh boy, watch this. When God give you an assignment, listen, when God give you an assignment, it is very important that you consult with him first. And then you ask him for direction and who for, and, and for, for you to put on your team. Listen, watch this. Whenever God speaks to you and he says, okay, I want you to, i give my example. I want you to start worshiping warfare. Okay, so this is like over six years ago when God gave me this. I want you to start worship in warfare. I did not immediately start telling people, oh, I'm about to do worship warfare. I got this brilliant idea. Mm -mm. First, I was like, wait a minute. I'm not a, my first thing was, I am not a pastor. Who gonna come? I don't have a church. In fact, when I started worship warfare, I had just joined a particular church. And I said, who gonna come? Like, nobody knows me like that. Like, I'm born and raised in Charlotte, but I don't know a lot of people. So God began to tell me, I said, well, God, you got, my, my thinking was, okay, well, I'm gonna have to keep going back to God until he give me specifics, listen, on who I need to go to. Watch this. And, and, and so I kept going back to God until he started laying that thing out, laying it out. I, I have to share with you how God gave it to me, but everything he was showing me in dreams, it, that's why all my mentees out they know I tell them get a notebook, keep it by your bed. God show you something, write it down, write it down. And I'm big on writing because I know that when I sleep, God deal with me heavily, heavily. So I write everything. And I was dreaming about and, and everybody that used to well, I used to do white sheets. I was dreaming about white sheets. Then I started dreaming about how the service was gonna be. Then I started dreaming about dancers and violinists. And I'm like, wait a minute, this and so by the time God Finished with me. I had the whole thing laid out. Then I started saying, okay, God, well, who is who, who am I gonna get to do this? Who am I gonna get to help me? And so I, I knew of the sound because I'm a worshiper, so and, and, and I'm a worshiper, so it's a certain sound that I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear the strings, but I wanted to hear worship. And I said, the, the whoever the psalmist is, is they have to have a certain sound. This was so funny because. I was at church this particular time and I was greeting. And this was, was the first one when I started, when I had Ladessa. And I had everything laid, laid out that I wanted to use the people I was going to ask to do certain things. But I did not have a psalmist because I'm like, nobody has this sound that I'm hearing in my ear. She was the guest psalmist that night. I was way out in the vestibule um, greeting because at the time I was a greeter. And she started singing. And I just left my post by my little whatever I was handing out went flying and I'm running in the sanctuary like that's her that's the sound that's the sound so that and that, that is how I was getting everything listen so after I lined all that up the next person I consulted with was my leader listen I didn't go to my friends my buddy my pal oh what you think what you think about this that no I, I heard from God I got specific instructions from him then I went to my leader and I said, this is what God gave me. What do you think? Do you approve it? Is there anything you, is it, what is God giving you? Because watch this, because whenever God give you something, this is going to bless y'all. Whenever God give you something, and it is from God, your leader, if your leader is sent by God and in tune with God, they will confirm that thing. Listen, so this is the time I went to the leader, told him, he said, whatever you need is at our disposal. What do you need us to do? Listen, and, and so I was offered all these different things. That why this is the this is the test. I was offered all the bells and whistles, and I said, "Whoa!" So I got excited. I can have it in there. I can have it at the oasis in the sanctuary. With all, and God said, "I didn't tell you to do that." He said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Go back and pray." This because this is how God did with me. God don't cut no corners with me. Very stern with me. He said, go back in, in prayer because now I smell your flesh. Watch this. So I had to go back in prayer. And this is when God told me, he said, Friday night, seven o'clock. Don't you ever change the day or the time because that was offered to you. Could, you have it on this time. You get more people and the people from the convention can come in. And God said, that's not what I told you. He said, this is the day. This is the time. You're gonna, you can have it at the, at the Oasis, but you'll have it in the gym. Listen, not the sanctuary. He said, I don't want religion tied to this. Watch this. So that is how worship and warfare was birthed. Why? Because I was specific and I listened to God's instructions. 
I did not consult with man until God told me, go to my leader. After I went to my leader, showed him who all I wanted. He said, you can use any, anybody that you want to use. He approved it all. Then I went to who God told me. Listen, so you have to be careful of who you consult with when God gives you the instruction. And this is another thing. When God gives you a vision for something, this is another thing you can do. You can say, God touched the heart of my leader that he will be in tune with this if it is your will. And he will give me strategic instructions that will assist the move of God. Not change it. Listen, not change it, but assist it. Why, why do I say that? Because I have been offered a lot of things when it comes to worship and warfare. I have been offered beautiful facilities to have it in. God said, no man. No man. He said, no. and see, God deal with me like this. He said, this is what you're going to do. He said, if you, he said, you will not have it in a church. Listen, you will not have it in a church. Everybody you get, you will give a seed. He said, this is what God told me. He said, you will give them a seed, a seed that you would want if you were doing. Listen, listen. And then he told me this. He said, and nobody's going to help you pay for it. Out of your pocket, pay for it. That is your gift back to me. That is why a lot of people, how can I help you? How can I help you? Mm -mm. Uh -uh, you, you ain't messing up what God told me to do. Let me pay for everything first. If you want to sow a seed, you sow it during the service. Let me pay for everything that God is telling me. And, and this is the thing. Whenever God gives you something, I don't know who this is for. Whenever God gives you something, do it with excellence. Do it with excellence. You spare no cost. Listen, because people are like, oh, you have it at the embassy suites. Yeah, I have, I've been having it there for about four, four years now. But watch this. My price for embassy suites has, has fluctuated. In the from from it can be the from up five hundred dollars to what I'm used to paying to down five. They they charge me what they want. Sometimes they nice, sometimes they not. God told me that ain't my. He said that's not your problem. I said do it. Listen, I said do it. So 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 what I do is I have to be I have to be um listen to his voice and be very strategic. In everything, and that's what I want to share with you tonight. When God gives you something, ask him for the strategic details in what he's saying. Because you want to do it with excellence. You want to make him proud. That's why when I do worship more, I'll be like, I'll be so happy because I'm like, God, I'm giving this back to you. This is my gift to you, Father, receive it. So people are like, what are we going to do? Well, I don't know. Obviously, I'm just so happy because God going to meet us here. So I'm, I'm just as happy as you are doing worship and warfare. But let me get back to this. So several mistakes was made. Number one, he consulted with the David, consulted with the people and not with God. Listen, mistake number two, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. The idea, listen, who am I talking to tonight? The idea of bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to the center of Israel was seen good to them. It was a great idea. Everybody on board. That's your number one sign. Something got something. When you got a bunch of amen people in your corner all the time and nobody's telling you, wait a minute, hold up. Did you think about doing it this way? Well, why don't you change this? Well, what, see, but if everybody in your corner is approving everything you're doing and ain't nobody saying, you need to change this. Something wrong with your circle. You got a bunch of yes people on your team. And that is not what you need. You need somebody to say, okay, sis, listen, listen, you're going to pay him to do that. I was going to do it for free. God told me to tell you the blessing. And, and so I would be crazy to say, no, no, God told me to go on and do it. Enough. When you got everybody on your team clapping, yeah, girl, you, you did good. That was good. And nobody's checking you. You need to check your team. Because it got to be somebody on the team. If you're the smartest one on the team, something wrong. If you're the smartest one, you something is wrong. That's all I do, worship and warfare. I get a sound tech. I don't know nothing about sound. I get a psalmist. I'm not going to try to do everything myself. I know I can't sing and have the note hit real good. I can get a good note, but I can may not can hold it too long. Listen, so you got to look at who's on your team. Check your team. That was problem number two. Problem number three. Oh, this is going to bless y'all. So they carried the ark of God on a new cart. Watch this. Transporting the ark on a cart was against God's commandment. Oh, God, listen. This is why I'm telling you. You got to make sure you ask God for strategic instructions when you're doing something. If God calls you to do something, if God laid in your heart to go feed the homeless, I go, okay, God, I need strategic instructions. What time do you want me to feed? 
what you want me to feed them? How regular you want me to feed them? Don't just go start fixing sandwiches and run on out the, out the door. You don't have your strategic instructions. Watch this. They carried on a new cart. That was against God's commandments. Listen, the ark was designed, listen, in Exodus 25, it tells them how it is to be transported. It tells them how it is to be carried. Listen, Exodus 25, 12 through 15 says, the ark of the covenant is only to be carried by the Levites. Oh God, listen, you got everybody carrying. You got Uzziah and all them. Uzziah trying to catch it. Watch this. It was only to be carried by the Levites of a certain family. We can imagine what these men thought. Look, we got us a new cart. It's beautiful. Look, we done made it out of the finest of wood. And this cart, we're going to set the Ark of the Covenant. First of all, it ain't supposed to be sitting on nothing. Listen. Oh, God, listen. So, and they were thinking that this is so beautiful. We know God going to be so pleased with what we did with our flesh. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get into that later. What we did with our flesh. So they thought that this new thing, this new luxury that they had could cover up their disobedience. Because they know better. Listen, you have to watch people. Listen, the new way cannot cover up what God told you to do. Listen, so what, what did I just say earlier? I was offered every time I've done worship and warfare, I've been offered facilities to have it in. I don't have to go to a hotel. That's I'm doing it because that's the way God told me to do it. I've been offered um Mega churches that have it in for free. God said, not in the church. Why? I'm not called to the church. Whoa, I'm going to leave that alone. He said, I'm not, I'm not called to church. I didn't call you for the church. He told me, he said, I called you for the kingdom. So I can't box him in like that because I already know if I have it in the church, certain people not going to come. Y'all were there. Y'all saw the people. Come on now. Come on now. And I'm, not, and I'm not saying that because they look they look dirty, but they didn't look churchy. They didn't look religious. They didn't look polished, but they had some of the biggest seeds I've ever gotten. Watch yourself. Watch this. So listen, listen. We get back to this. So they thought by them putting the Ark of the Covenant on this beautiful thing that they had crafted would cover up the fact that you're supposed to be carrying it. And number one, only the Levites supposed to carry it. Oh my God. Listen, listen. So they came with this new idea. Watch this. The Philistines transported the ark on a cart in 1 Samuel. They get, oh, this is going to bless y'all. Listen. So the Philistines tried this before and they got away with it. This is 1 Samuel 6 and 10. The Philistines transported the ark on a cart and they got away with it. Why? Because they were the Philistines. Watch this. But God expected, God expected more from his people. Oh, who am I talking to tonight? You can't do what everybody else doing when you call. You can't do what everybody else doing when you're chosen. Listen, I, it would have been anybody else probably could have took worship, my little worship and warfare idea and had it in a mega church and did well. I can't. Why? Because I can't get away with what everybody else doing. It's a whole lot of things that I would want to do that my flesh want to do, but I can't do it. Why I can't do it? Because I'm God's chosen. Why you can't do it, Larissa? Because you God's chosen. Why you can't do it, Maureen, Penny, Lori? Because you God's chosen. Why you can't do it, Bonnie? Because you God's chosen. You can't get away with it. He's not going to let you. Watch this. Watch this. Then David, um, um, problem number four, then David and all the Israels played music before God. The problem was that none of it pleased God. He was not impressed. Oh, God, listen to this. He was not impressed. We are often tempted, listen, because they were playing all this. Remember, he said, David said, get all the instruments out. Get the harp, get, get the drums, get every instrument you got. Get the dancers, get everybody out here. Why are you doing all that to cover up the fact that you're wrong? Woo, who am I talking to? And what, they was, what God said was, I am not pleased with all this pretending, all this parade you got. All this stuff you're doing, I am not pleased. And God just sat back and looked at them. And what, what is God saying? You are offering up to me strange fire. That ain't the anointing and you're not worshiping. Listen, he said, you're not worshiping. He said, what you are doing are you are, he said, because you are all in your flesh. He said, you are all in your flesh, all the dancing, all the music, all the bells and whistles, all the sound, all the sounds you got going. He said, but you did what I told you not to do. Listen, 
and you're trying to cover up your disobedience and you think I don't see it? Who is God talking to tonight? You done took my ark of the covenant with all my promises in it and you put it on a cart that is against my will. He said, number one, you came up with this idea and you consulted the people. You never consulted me. Now you think you're going to come in front of me with all this, what you call praise and worship? You think it's going to please me? God said, not so. Not so. Not so. He said, it stinks in my nostrils. He said, in fact, what you offer me right now is strange fire. It is not the fire of the Holy Ghost. Listen, listen. This is why I'm telling you. When God tells you to do something a certain way, you have to do it like he said. Or else when you present it to him, he will not be pleased. And it just may cost you your life like it cost Uzziah. Watch this, watch this. He said, you offer me strange fire. Then number five, watch this. Uzziah put out his hand because he was trying, he thought, well, I don't want the Ark of the Covenant. It's so precious. I don't want it to fall on this floor. Mistake again. Mistake again. Watch this. This was strictly forbidden for anybody to touch it. And they knew that. But your flesh told you, touch it anyway. Listen. It was strictly forbidden regarding the transport of the ark. Numbers four says they shall not touch anything holy unless they die. They already knew this. That was the law. You don't touch it or you will die. Watch this. He did it because the ark stumbled and he thought maybe I should grab it because I don't want it to fall on the floor. And then plus we just got this new beautiful cart we done built and we got it sitting on there. And I wanted to crash to the floor and 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 and, and break. So I'm gonna try to catch it. So Isaiah decided in a moment to disregard God's commandment. Listen, you gotta be careful. When God say don't do it, when God say don't touch it, you better not touch it. Uzziah thought in a moment, his flesh, this is how Satan worked. Listen to this. His flesh told him, come and touch it. Ain't that how Satan worked? You ain't going to get caught. God ain't really going to kill you. I mean, you trying to spare his ark from falling on the ground. Surely God won't kill you. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Watch this. Watch this. It says, as soon as he popped, as soon as he reached out his arm to catch the Ark of the Covenant, God struck him dead on the spot. God fulfilled his promise. He said, don't touch it in Numbers 4, and you touched it. God is not a man. He's not like man. He cannot lie. Listen, when he say don't do it, he mean don't do it. Listen, he struck him because he put his hand to the Ark, and God fulfilled his promise, promises of Numbers and 4. But listen, it goes deeper than Watch this. The sin of Uzziah was more than just a reflex of action or instinct. God struck Uzziah because his action was based upon critical errors in his thinking. Oh, God. Listen, this is what, and this is power because this is what will happen when you don't think. You get caught up in the moment. You don't stop and consult with God. You just want to do something because I got in my emotions and I just decided I was just going to go on and do it. And, and, and what if you die? Because that's what happened to Uzziah. Watch this. Uzziah, he, er, he erred in his thinking and, he, and it didn't matter. He thought, first of all, it don't matter who transport the ark. That don't matter, number one. Number two, he said it didn't matter how it got there. Number three, he said it didn't matter um, because it had sat in his father's house for so long. It's been there so long, so all we need to do is just get it there. It don't matter how long it takes us or who, who touched it or whatever. Then he thought, listen, number one mistake, Uzziah thought, God can't take care of that. God can't take care of his own ark that he created the stuff to go in it. So you think you can take care of it better than God? Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, he can, you can't take care of it better than God can. Because it failed didn't mean that God wasn't going to spare it. His instructions to you was don't touch it. Listen, so you got outside of what God could do. You thought, I just do it myself. So God killed you, right? Listen, Uz Uzziah erred in thinking that the ground of that threshing floor was less holy than his own hand. Ooh! So Uzziah thought, listen, Uzziah thought that that ground is not holy enough. That ground can't protect it, but my hands can. What is he saying? My flesh got this. 
No, no, no. What did God say? Flesh can't glory in my presence. So as I have figured, my flesh is better. Me using my flesh is better than me relying on the power of God to protect his own thing. Oh, my God. What, what am I saying? What am I saying? Listen, listen. When you, God gives you something to do, this is why you have to rely on the arms of God. Rely on the power of God to get it done. Because you try to do it in your own strength, going to mess it up. You try to do it in your own strength is going to make it not turn out the way God wanted to and he won't get glory and, and you will be offering him strange fire and he won't be pleased and it could cost you your life. Flesh can't glory in his presence. What am I saying? When you are doing something for God, your flesh has to die. Oh God, your flesh has to die. What am I saying? If, if you notice, I'm talking about having a service um, once a month starting October. Do you think with all the things I got going on, that was one more thing that I just, oh, I can't wait to have me a service. Oh, I can't wait to have a preach to the people. I could have stayed right here in my house and kept doing what I'm doing now. God said, no. He said, you're going to keep doing that, but you're going to come off that Facebook and you're going to have it in there where you can lay your hands on my people. Listen, he said, because, because what you're doing is you charging them over the airways. He said, but they need your hands on them. They need your hands through me. They need that power, that transfer. They need mantles being passed. Listen, and you can't do that over the airways. Listen, listen. So, so what, what God has me doing, he said, okay, I know I'm, you, your flesh can't have nothing to do with this because my flesh is saying, oh, you can just stay online. That'll be easy. Just stay right here. I mean, you got used to it now. You just get on here. You just flow with God and you'll be great. God said, no. Get your flesh out the way. Get your money together. Go get a hotel room. Go have it there like I told you. And I'm like, well, God, why I can't have it in my own church? He said, because that's not what I told you. He said, kingdom. Listen, kingdom minded. Kingdom. He said, he keep telling me, get your mind out of the church. You try to do it in the four walls. He said, you're not doing it in the four walls. See, because I understand what God is doing. Right now, it's in the hotel. I already know what the next move is going to be. It's going to be outside the hotel. Listen, it's going to be outreach. I already know where we're going with this. But God is saying, take it to the hotel. And do it there for a season. And then I'm going to tell you what to do next. I'm going to keep taking you from level to level because I'm testing your obedience. Listen, listen, who am I talking to? God has to get you out of being comfortable. Listen, he don't want you being comfortable. He will switch things up with you. I was talking to one of my mentees and we was talking about fasting and praying. And she said, yeah, I got I, I to gotta go deeper with this thing. And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, you got it. You got it. You, you got you, you in the vein now. I said, you with me. You my girl. I said, yeah, you got to go deep. You got to fast deep. You got to do it a different way. You got to switch up things. You got to, because God is constantly moving and he stretches us and it don't feel good. He stretches us and it don't feel good. Listen, listen, who am I talking to? Because you, a lot of things we don't want to do. Do you think I want to take my money? and go rent a hotel room and then have to pay musicians and then have to get people in place and, and have to stay at the hotel room that night because it's going to be too late for me to drive back to Gaston because i got to be at work Monday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. Listen, this is the stretching. But why, but why am I so adamant about doing it? Because when I go to bed at night, I hear the soul. Oh, see, listen, when I go to bed at night, it ain't no like, oh, I'm peace, sleeping so peaceful and I'm laying on lily pads and all the glory. My sleep ain't like that. My sleep is like, get me out. Help me. Save me. That's what I hear. Help me. Save me. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. That's what I hear. So I know and, 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 and the closer it get, I have to go to work. That's why people say you always doing something. You always do. And, because, and, and, and for me, this is just me personally, it's never enough. It's never enough. And then I was like, oh, worship and warfare is over. So I can come off the fast. And y'all know I love to eat. So I was like, first, the first thing I did, I went to smoke pit. I ordered me a, a, a whole platter of food. Couldn't eat it. That was day one. Next day, went to, where did I go? Olive Garden. Got me my um, Parmesan um, chicken. Couldn't eat. And this is going on and on and on. And, and it's like, I'm like, God, what am I doing? He said, did I tell you to come off that fast? He said, you, he said, Ned, you got to prepare for the next thing. And I said, okay, God, I'm sorry. I, 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 was, I wasn't focused. I got to get back focused. I got to get back on what you told me. Listen, because this is part of the stretching. This is part of the stretching. This is the part where your flesh has to die. 
Listen, your flesh has to die in this. Watch this. So, 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 Uzziah was wrong on so many levels. But watch this. The last thing, David became angry. Woo! Listen, David became angry because God killed Uzziah. David anger. Listen, where, where did his anger come from? He confused. Oh, Lordy. So this is a lot of times. Listen, we get mad at God simply for one reason. We confused. Who am I talking to tonight? Who am I talking to tonight? God would tell you to do something. You have to do it. It don't work. And you get mad at him. But God, I did it the way you told me. Did you really do it? Did you really do it the way he told you? Why? Why am I saying that? Because a lot of times God will tell us to do things and we will do it somewhat the way he told us. But did you follow his strategic instructions? Did you do it every the way he told you line upon line, precept upon precept? Did you do it that way? Did it hurt you when you did it? Listen, because a lot of times we do things and, and but when you're doing things for God, especially it hurts. It is a sacrifice. Listen, ask me how I know. Watch this. Do you think writing five, six books is easy? Mm -mm. My lieutenant, I'll sit at this computer and be writing all day, a whole day gone. Ma, you gonna eat? Ma, we going out? Ma, no, because I'm right. Because when God gives you something to do, you have to do it the way he told you to do it. And it hurt. What David got, got, David got mad because David got upset because he did it. He knew it was a good thing. Listen, it was a good thing to do. Listen, it was a good idea. He had his amen corner. Everybody was on the board with him. So I got all these people. Oh, we're we just going. We, we, we're praising God. We offered him this strange fire. And it looks good. Look at the car we got this thing on. And then, and then what happened? You're doing something that, yeah, it, the, the covenant, you are going to come that does need to be back in this rightful place. But did you consult with God? No. You consulted with your buddies, your friends. And you say, go get everybody. We're going to do this thing. You consulted with them. You never consulted with God, number one. Number two, you decided, okay, instead of getting the Levites, like God told you, that the only people that were supposed to even handle this was the Levites. No, you just got some other people. Y'all carry it. You all, you're doing a, a thing. You have a good idea, but is it a God idea? Oh, thank you, Titus. That's my brother. Listen, you have a good idea, but is it a God idea? Listen, listen. So, so, so that's how they got in trouble. And a lot of times when we get in trouble, it's the root of our trouble or the root of our anger is really confusion. Listen, it's really confusion. Watch this. So we're going to get down to this. So David's fear and God's blessing on Obed-Edom's house. So when David got scared, they took the Ark of the Covenant and they took it to Obed-Edom's house. So what, what, what cursed David turned around and blessed Obed-Edom. Because y'all know I love to tell that story, how the glory set in his house and everybody that came in his house was blessed. And it went down to generation to generation because they had heard of Obed Edom. He was a man that loved God. He was a man that feared God. So we're going to put the Ark of the Covenant in his house. What the thing that blessed me, and I love to talk about Obed Edom. The thing that blessed me about Obed Edom, listen, why he wasn't scared? This thing that killed everybody. With us, I had touched the thing and died and then you bring it into my house. Why was Obed Edom not scared? Because he knew who God. Oh, listen, he knew who God was. He knew what he knew what that ark represented. Oh yeah, bring it on in, bring it on in, and everything was blessed. And it says that and when you read down the lineage of Obed Edom, it says him and all his lineage it went like sixty generations. Listen, this thing went big with Obed Edom because the ark of the covenant rested in his house. Watch, and it stayed there for like three months. But watch this, David knew. David knew three things. David knew three things that, that, that made his reign great. This is what David knew. After all that, he understood this. David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel. David knew who he was. Out of all the mistakes, out of messing up with the ark, I still know who I am. Who am I talking to tonight? Don't care how many times you mess up. Don't care how many times you fumble. Don't care how many times you fail. Don't care how many times you backslid. As long as you know who you are in God, you got something on your side. Watch this. David knew that God called him and established him as king over Israel. What am I saying? You have to know who you are and be, and be true to that thing. Listen, listen, because I am like this. I know who I am. I know what I was created to do. I know what I walk in. I know the authority. Some people will say, oh, yeah, okay, she just like super deep or, or she just arrogant. No, I'm not arrogant. 
I, I'm, I'm a little forceful when it comes to the prophetic. Why? Because when you step into that type of power and that type of authority, God takes over. It ain't Peaches doing it. It ain't Dr. Three. It ain't, it ain't, ain't uh, Elizabeth. The, that anointing takes over. And with the anointing comes power. With the anointing comes strength. And when you understand it, when, when, when God said it, listen, you can t- and I tell you, I tell you, I said, I'll tell you God said something. You can take that check to the bank. I said, that's one that ain't going to bounce, baby. I said, listen, but you got to listen to everything God is saying when he's speaking through me. Listen, and, and so it's not that you're arrogant. It's the authority that you want. I am a child of the king. Do you know who my daddy is? They're like people tell you, when sickness break out, people around me get sick. They, they My daughter's like, oh, here she go. Because I talk to Satan like, hold up, hold up. You trying me again? You, you Maybe you don't forget. Maybe you don't forget he delivered me from this and this. And I just go, I, I go in. I, I know you ain't trying me. Apparently, you don't know who my daddy is. He is the king of kings and lords of lords. Maybe you ain't read Revelation. It says he's coming back riding on a white horse. His robe gonna be dipped and dyed in blood. Why? Because he fought every battle and he won. So I know you ain't trying me, Satan. I know you ain't trying me. Apparently, you don't know who my daddy is. I said, matter of fact, let me get out this book and I'm going to show you what he said he's going to do. And I walked them scriptures. I said, now try me. See, and that's where that authority come from. And, and on top of that, I know I'm his girl. I said, listen, listen, I'm his favorite. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody, that, that's my stance. I take that one to the grave. I'm his girl. That's why you see them shirts with I'm his girl on and my car tag. I believe that with everything in me. I don't care what, what Satan tried. I don't care what, what come up against me. God got me. Listen, how do I know? He done proven himself over and over and over again that, 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 that I am his. I'm his chosen. And once you get that in here, you are unstoppable. Listen, you are unstoppable. I have gotten bank loans, stuff paid off just from this right here. Decree and declaring what God said. I may not talk to the bank and say, you know what God said? The houses on a thousand hills belong to him and my father is rich. I just be throwing, I just be making little statements. I ain't gonna say in Exodus 5 and 10, no, I ain't doing all that. But I'm giving them the word in our conversation. Listen, because I said, you ain't gonna downplay my God. I don't care what the numbers look like. And I tell them, run your numbers. Run your numbers. And I said, but I have favor. And I tell them, man, ultimately, I got favor. Oh, I tell I be in means at school, and I say, have you not checked my, you better Google me. <laughs> I tell them all the time, you better Google me. I said, I'm his girl. I said, you Google me. I said, I come packing with some power. God got my back. Don't play with me. Don't, and I tell you, I said, don't, 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 they don't have me work or somebody, I hear somebody say something to somebody tell me, and I'm like, you know what? Don't, don't, don't talk about me. Don't, don't do yourself like that, because I'm telling he be, ain't no telling what may happen to you, but you may not want to talk about me. That's all I'm saying. And see, when you walk with them, when you get that in here, I, I tell people, I tell them all the time, I say, you know what, this ain't what you want. I promise you this ain't what you want. And you got to get that in your mind. David knew who he was. That was one thing. Number two, his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of his people. David knew God wanted to use him. Listen, once you understand that God wanted to use you, God wants to use you, you can be unstoppable because you know that I'm here for a purpose. I know I'm on assignment. You may not like me. You may not can stay in the city, get up here and pray, but I am on assignment. When my assignment done, then I go, you can have it. But until then, listen, until then, I'm on assignment. And David understood what he was called to do. Watch this. David inquired of God. Listen, as David sought God and looked to him for guidance, he was blessed. David understood if I keep going to God, I'll be blessed. David inquired of God over and over again, and he was blessed. Watch this. I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to read this to you. So in, in First Chronicles, this is after, remember after he took the ark to Obed-Edom's house. Watch this. And then he said, this is what happened. We're going to get down. This is chapter 14. He says, the, the minute the Philistines heard that David had been made king over a united Israel, they went out in force to capture David. When David got the report, he marched out to confront them. On their way, the Philistines stopped to plunder a valley, to plunder in a valley. David prayed. See, he learned now. Last time, he was consulting with the people. This time, listen, David prayed to God. 
Is this the right time to attack the Philistines? Will you give me the victory? God answered, attack. Told you to kill her. Attack. I'll give you the victory. And then the Philistines were back at it. So after that, the Philistines were back at it again, plundering in the valley. David prayed to God again. God answered, this time, don't attack them head on. Circle around and come at them and, and come at them out of the balsam grove. That's a tree. When you hear the sound of shuffling of feet in the tops of the trees, then attack them. I told you God is strategic. Listen, he says, this time, don't attack. Ooh, oh, my God. He said, this time, don't attack them like you did the last time. This is about to bless y'all. Don't attack them like you did the last time. God switched it up. He said, this time, go around. He said, I'm going to send you a sign. It's going to sound like rumbling in the trees. Watch this. He said, when you hear the sound of shuffling of feet in the tops of the trees, then attack. God, he said, God, God will be too sick. Listen, when you listen to God's instruction, listen to this, God will be two steps ahead of you, slaughtering your, slaughtering your enemies. Watch this. David did exactly as God commanded, slaughtering the Philistines all the way from Gibbon to Gizar. David was soon famous all over the land, near and far. And God put the fear of, and put the fear of God into a godless nation. Listen, listen, what just happened? First time, I'm going to get the ark. I'm going to consult with the people. It ain't going to work. I didn't consult with God. This time, I'm going to consult with God about my next Oh, who am I talking to? I'm going to consult with God about my next move. God told me, shall I pursue? God said, yes, you're going to get the victory. So David did just what God told him. These people came back. Philistines came back. They attacked him. God, so David said, well, no. Nah, let me pray because David learned his lesson about moving. Who am I talking to about moving without praying or about moving without strategic instructions? So David went back. He said, I ain't going to attack them. What worked the last time may not work this time. So let me go back and see what God going to tell me to do this time. Listen, so David goes back, pray again. God said, listen, I'm going to give you a sign this time. Go around the other way. Oh, Listen. So that, who am I talking to? Listen, Penny, this is going to bless you. The way you've been doing it ain't working. I'm going to show you a different, a strategic way to move. You're going to move just like I tell you to move. And when you move, oh God, when you move like I'm telling you to move, I'm going to be two steps ahead of you killing your enemies. Oh God, listen, listen. So that's what happened. He was two steps ahead of David already killing the enemies before David could get to him. Watch this. So David knew they, they even knew that this time I got to inquire of God before I make any moves. Watch this. David listened and obeyed God's instructions. You shall not go up after them like you did the last time, but circle them and then attack. Listen, and when you do it my way, I'm going to be, I'm already going before you. Who am I talking to tonight? Who am I talking to tonight? Do it God's way. The way you've been doing it is not going to work. Listen, the way you've been doing it is not going to work. And, and this is why this is why I'm telling you the, the blessing of God. Because if, if people that, if you attended worship and warfare, if you saw me, I was moving. Because the whole time I'm listening, God, do you want me to go this way, that way? Who do you want to pray next? So, and I always tell my team, keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me because I'm listening for what God telling me. And he'll say, mm, Pastor, can you sing now? Sing now. Move now. No, okay, now get, and I just look at, I look at her and say, get the mic. Sing. And then so she'll sing, or I'll tell um, Apostle Maureen, strings, I need strings, I need strings. Because God is doing something strategic. And when he's moving strategically, you got to listen to him. You got to listen to his voice. Listen, you can't do it the way you've been doing it. You can't do That's why I tell people, we do worse and more there. I have an agenda, but I guarantee you, we're not going to stick to it. We have about three altar calls. One altar call in the beginning of the service. One I did in the middle, and then one I had to go back again. I was like, wait a minute. Let me make sure I, everybody that was supposed to be up here is up here. Why? And I, I, God even switched up the way we did the, uh, the uh, sowing of the seeds. Because my idea, those that are on program knew that I had on there, I'm going to do seeds at the end. God said, no, do it right now. And I'm like, in the middle? But I have to be obedient to what he's saying. And it was strategically set up that way. Watch this. And God blessed. God met us there. God did what he had to do. But you have to be, listen, what is God saying tonight? 
the way you've been doing it, you cannot do it that way again. It won't work. Listen, it won't work. You got to be strategic. You got to keep going back to him, even though it may be, listen, even though, okay, listen, this is this, this a bless you. So I've had about nine, 10 surgeries. I've really lost count. Um, and and I, on, on, I ain't talking no minor stuff. This has been major, major surgeries. So each time I would get sick, I would think, well, I'm a fast like I normally fast and pray and God going to give me the victory. Because I, I always knew whatever I'm in, I ain't in it. This sickness ain't unto death. God going to bring me out. I already knew that. Why? Because God, I'm not going to leave this earth until my purpose is fulfilled. It's too much you show me that I have not done. So I know I'm not getting ready to die. So God, you're going to bring me out. Let me go on my little fast like I normally do. And bless the Lord. We go. And he was like, no. How are you trying to fast the same way you fast the last time, but you want a different victory? Woo! But you want a different victory. But you want me to move in a different way. Who am I talking to tonight? So if you've been fasting the same way for the past 10 years, time to change. You've been getting up praying at the same time for the past 10 years, time to change. You've been praying for like 30 minutes every day, time to increase your prayer time. So listen, that is what David did and God went before him and he slaughtered his enemies. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, so at the signal, listen, at the signal that the Lord was at work, David and his troops rushed forward to victory. This principle is true in our everyday walk with God. When we sense the Lord is at work, listen, when you know God is working, when you know God is working, that is why, listen, that, that is why a lot of times I tell you when I'm teaching, when you know God moving, when it's going to bless you, don't wait till I'm done, so then God is going before you, you don't have to wait till I'm like, now nah, everybody, you see the little thing go across the screen, most of you been on here, you know when the soul, and, and like even the in church and, and the word get good to me, I pull out my phone and start cash app it. Oh, apostle, that, that, that right there, that's me. That's me. That's my word. And so I saw, well, what, is, what is David saying? Listen, when David knew that the Lord was at work, that is when he started moving quickly. He started getting into, he started pursuing in the battle. When we sense the Lord is at work, we must go out to battle, advance quickly. That's 2 Samuel 5 and 24. And we will see great victory won. People are always asking me, Number three, you always seem to get this major breakthrough, or you always talk about you sow the seed and God did this. Why? Because I sow as soon as I hear that word. I don't contemplate it, think about it. Well, wait a minute. Now, let me see how much I get. You know how much you got in the bank. You ain't sitting there in no deep thought <laughs> and waiting for them to say, I need you to sow $50, or I need you to sow $100. Listen, when the word hit, you sow. That is a thank you, thank you, Donald. That is um that is an act of your faith, an act of your obedience. God, I know that's my word. I've been praying on that, and she just talked about it. That, that right there uh, uh, in, in church, I, I'm sitting there. I, I'm sitting there waiting. For, for, and I'm like, as soon as he say it, as soon as he say what I'm believing God for, I'm sowing. Um, so I sit in church most times with my phone right in my hand. I'm not waiting for the end of the service you to say, now I need y'all to sell $150. Now I need y'all to sell $20. And you just sold $40. Oh, because I'm believing God for something bigger than this little $40 you asking for now. I need God to do something bigger. Watch this, watch this. So, so they sold and they went to, they, they, they not they sold, Jesus. They, they said the Lord was at work. So they went out to battle, 2 Samuel 5 and 24. And, and they saw a great victory won. What is God saying? In the spiritual warfare, you have to observe, obey, and you got to move. Observe, obey, and move. And what am I saying? When you believe in God for something, and someone speak that word, or God tell you to move, you got to move then. Or you got to sow then. And then it's not all about you sowing seeds. I'm saying when God give you a word to do something, you have to move quickly. You can't contemplate it. And wait a minute. I don't know about that. Uh, is it? If they spoke a word that is pertaining to you, that is good ground. You're sowing into that word that is spoken. Listen, listen. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say this because I know a lot of people get hung up on the seed. Listen, when you sow a seed, that is the only way you're going to get the harvest. If you study your Bible, offering, open up windows of heaven, you and I have room enough to receive. And that, that is what an offering does. The tithe is mandatory. Ain't no question about that. Your 10%, you better get it. Listen, that, that, that is a requirement. But the seed, oh, is the, oh, and this is why I love to sow seed. Now, I, I'm, a, I'm tithing regardless. But I love to sow seed. Why? Because the seed produces my harvest. 
The seed is the only thing you can put in the ground and you're going to get back more than you put in. Listen, the seed is the only thing you don't know what the return is going to be. Listen, you can sow a seed thinking, I need, I'm going to sow this seed but, but, and I'm, I'm going to need a financial breakthrough. But then you go down the road and God spare your life from a rent. You don't know what you're sowing for. You you sow and you and you get the harvest of that thing. And the thing I love about a seed, it keep ooh, a seed keep producing, keep producing, keep producing, keep producing. Listen, okay, I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone because y'all know. I'm, and I told God, I said, God, send me seed so it's please. Send me seed. I, I want people that got my DNA. I want people like me. Listen, listen. So watch this. So David did as God commanded him. He did this and by waiting for evidence of, for God, of God's work and then giving himself completely to the battle. The victory that sprang from his obedience made David and Israel respected and feared in the nations. Listen, his obedience. When David got this thing right, when he knew I got to consult God in everything I do, every move I make. I, I got to consult God in everything I did. And what did, did God do? He allowed David to get the victory. David only got the victory. Listen, David only got the victory when he did it God's way. David only got the victory when he listened to what God said. And what did God do? It said David was David was respected in all of his, his David and Israel was respected in all the nations. Who got the glory? Oh God. God got the glory. Listen, he assisted, David did it the right way. God assisted him in getting the victory. In fact, God fought some of the battle for it. Remember, remember he said, when you hear the brunt, the, the sound of feet in the trees, I would have went two steps before you and already fought the battle. Listen, y'all, I hope y'all getting this tonight. He will go before you and fight your battle, help you get the victory. All you got to do is give him the glory. Listen, listen, listen. Watch it. We get down to Chronicles 15. Now, I have, what does David do? David starts worshiping. Listen, it says in 15, um, David built houses for himself in the city of David. He cleared a place for the Ark of the Covenant and he pitched the tent there. So the priests and the Levites consecrated themselves to bring up the Ark of the Covenant. David said, this time we're doing this thing right. Everybody going on a fast. Everybody going to consecrate. Everybody, we, we, we ain't nobody getting killed. We're doing this the right way. I'm praying first. They did it the right way. So they consecrated. They went and got the Ark of the Covenant. And they brought it up. Then you get down to verse 25. It says, now they were ready. David and the elders of Israel and the commanders of the thousands started out to get the Ark of the Covenant. And they brought it up from the house of Obed-Edom. And they went rejoicing because God helped the Levites and strengthened them. Listen, he strengthened them to carry the Ark of the Covenant of God. What is he saying? Sanctify yourselves and your brother that you might bring the Ark of the Lord, God, back in its rightful place. And that's what David did. He put the Ark of the Covenant back in its rightful place. David understood in order to do this thing, I got to do it the right way. In order to do this thing, I got to listen to what God said. I got to do it the right way. I, I got I got I, I got to Yes, Larissa, she giving you her testimony. That's what I'm telling y'all. This is good ground. Uh, about yeah, about a year ago, when I first started going live, doing sold out, God gave me a word for her during the live. She had been waiting on a kidney forever. Got off the live, do call, get here. Been waiting forever for a kidney. Things looking bad. I did one live. She was obedient. God, that quick, that not even... Not even a 24 hour. The live ended. I think in about 10 minutes, she got the phone call. Get the Duke. We got a kidney. She's been waiting, been on the list. That is how faithful God is. When you are obedient, when you do what God tells you to do, he will move. But you cannot allow your flesh to get in the way. Flesh cannot get in the way of what God is doing. I am telling you. You have to do it the way he said. You have to get his instructions. You have to pay, pay attention to his strategic his strategic instructions. Listen, his instructions are strategic. So you got to make sure that flesh is not in the way and you actually hear what he's saying, that you hear what he is speaking to you. Because listen, when he speaks, he will speak with clarity. That's why I tell all my mentees, you have to write down what God is giving you. Because in your dreams, you ain't just dreaming to be dreaming. Now, some stuff is just 
some dreams make no sense. But when them dreams are specific, or especially if you keep dreaming the same dream over and over, he's not showing you for no reason. Listen, so what am I saying tonight? When God, when you have all of you on here that have these ministries and ideas and things that God have given you, consult with him first. Get the strategic details first. Once you get what God has given you and you get those details, then you go back. Listen, then you go back and you take it to your leader and get their, get their input on it. That's why you see everything I'm doing, my leader been knew about it. You just find it out. But I consulted with God, got God's approval, got all his information, got all, got everything the way God want me to do it. And then I went to my leader. What do you think about this? What is God giving you? Do you what, what, how do you feel about it? Is this not the right time? Should I pursue? What did David say? Should I pursue or not? I'll even say pursue. Listen, so that, 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 is, that is everything that I do. Because you have to do things in order because God is a God of order. Who am I talking to? You can't be out here rogue. You can't be out here doing anything. I have a covering. I consult with my leaders. Whenever I'm doing anything you see me doing, they know about it. Before I started sold out, they knew about it. Worship and warfare, they knew about it. What I'm about to do, um, sold out live in the hotel, they know about it. Every move you make, if you're under, you have to be under a leader that covers you. And before I went to my leader, I say, God, listen, give them the heart to understand what I'm saying. God, and, and even this, God, let me go to them in the right timing. This is wisdom. Don't just get, let me call them and see what they're doing right there. They could be having a bad day. So that's why you have to consult God first before you even go to your leaders. Listen, so I am done for tonight, but listen, um, make sure you have these visions, these dreams, all these things that God has given you. Make sure you consult with him. Make sure you get his plan, his agenda. Remember, you are called to the kingdom, not a church. Listen, Kingdom, now that's what he keeps telling me every time I'm trying to do something. And if it starts sounding too churchy, God will tell me kingdom. That's all I hear him saying in my ear, kingdom, not church. You're getting churchy with it. I said kingdom. So listen, if you want to sow tonight, the information is on the screen. You know you're sowing into good grounds. Signs, wonders, and miracles follow my ministry. Uh, I am a walking testimony myself. Um, so you all know uh, my testimony. You know the ground you're sowing into is good. If you want to sow, the information is on the screen. If you have not gotten this book, listen, listen. Everybody is texting me about this book. This book is, and you can see this ain't no little skinny book. This book is um, from some of the episodes of Sold Out. But it is all of the notes. All of, so like tonight when I'm going, if, if you see my um iPad here, it's it's full of notes. I didn't I don't give everything. Yeah, Donna, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> bless you all that have gotten your book. Yes, some people got their Sunday. If you um the information, y'all can go to ca um cash app. Um the book is $35. I'll show a little video at the end. Um you can get the book. I, I have some here. Um, that I can get to you, but if I have to get the publisher to send them, it will come from them and they will have to ship it from, from the manufacturers, but I have some here that I can get to you. I think most people are getting it in about two days um, when I ship them from home. So if you want to get the book, just uh, inbox me, make sure don't just, if you cash apping for the book, the book is 35, but you need to put um, the book and I need your address. Some people was getting the book and then giving the address. I had to keep going back and forth. So please share your address um, when you are getting the book and I will get it out to you this week. I do my mailings. I will get the book out to you. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. I love you. God bless you. If you need anything, uh, feel free to inbox me or call me if you have my number. Um, also, you all can, um, if you're someone, you can... Put your prayer request on there so I know because I always pray over the seed, but I will pray strategically over those um, prayer requests if you put them there as well. God bless you and I love you. Remember, October 10th, we're going to be in um, Holiday Inn in Charlotte. So we'll be in the Holiday Inn. We'll be going live. I want to see you there. I want to lay my hands on you, pray with you or whatever. God bless you and I love you. Thank you.